Here I come on my way to test to see is this the best espresso that you can make at home. Today we're going to find out. And also, I thought, you know what? This is a beautiful instrument made by Flair. This is a beautiful instrument made by Kinu. They are worthy of a proper Sterling intro. testing these instruments. This is the Flare Pro, the ch, -ch, ch They sent it to me, they gave this to me to test out, and they also recommended that I talk to Kinu and see if I can get them to support with one of these grinders, which they have supported me with the M47 Phoenix. And today, I am going to be exploring what it is like to brew with the Flare Pro. I have spent about two hours today testing with this machine, testing with this grinder, to dial it in like a missile launching into its target. Have I done it? No. Am I the king of espresso? No. Am I gonna brew espresso anyways? Yes, I am. So, big shout out to Flair and Kinu for sending me these devices. Let's jump into it. Let's find out what it's like to brew with these machines. Now, I'm gonna start out by measuring out 20 grams of beans. This was a little cup given to me by Andrew over at Flair for espresso. I'll be using it today. It also happens to match the color scheme in here. So there's that. Sterling, what are you brewing today? Well, you'll be surprised to see that I am brewing Huckleberry Roasters, which is actually a great roaster here in Denver as well. Today, that's what I have on hand, and that is what I am going to be brewing. So we're going to start out with 20 grams of coffee. Now, I am not super versed in espresso, mostly because it's not super available um, at a high quality level in the home at a manual, on a manual type of press. You have things like the, the Nis, Nissimo or Finissimo, whatever that thing is called by Starbucks. Most of those things are you drop a little packet in and they give you a pretty good espresso for the amount of work that you do. However, Flair has made it to where you can get high quality espresso with a good amount of pressure, up to nine bars or 10 if you really want to, at home um, without a ton of money. Because usually if you want to get to the point where you can brew manual espresso at home, you're easily into the thousands. So, 20 grams of coffee. Now, it took me, like I said, a really long time to dial in with this grinder. I spent two hours with it and I got really frustrated and I was freaking annoyed. I eventually figured it out, got it dialed in for a good amount of espresso. And I have to say, when um, Kinu sent over this grinder, I just wanted to like twirl it forever because if you ever play with those things, they've got a perfect click when you spin them. This is one of them. It's so well made that I, I just wanted to do things I wasn't supposed to with it and like whip it around and stuff like that. So I'm going to grind this coffee 20 grams down to an espresso level that has been working for me. Uh, okay, I gotta switch hands. <laughs> All right. Oh, see, this is the thing I was saying I shouldn't do, but I want to because it has an amazing sound. Anyways, we're done grinding the coffee. Here's a look at a couple of the grinds that I went through earlier, testing out, trying to find the right one. Eventually, I found what's working well for me, so we're gonna start there. Now, the Flare is a pretty simple machine to use, but it takes a little bit of practice. So I have been practicing with it, and one of the first things that you have to do is heat up the brew chamber. Now it's got this cool little sticker on here, and as this gets to the right temperature Celsius, it will change color. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it on my Stag uh, water heater, and just pop it on the top here and let the steam rise through it, and hopefully get it up to a pretty good temperature. As I heat up the brew chamber, I ponder, and I think, Will the espresso get me through the day? Will I need a single shot? Will I need a double? Will I need seven shots of espresso? Most likely not. And half of you are probably going to leave a comment about how fast I talk. To which I reply, nothing, because I just talk fast. Okay, I don't know if you can hear it. The brew chamber is pretty hot, and the colors have changed, and it is ready for me to take it and to use it. So, with that, finishing up its heating process, what I'm going to be doing is taking out the grounds that I have here in the Kinu grinder. I'm going to be placing those in the porta filter right here. Using our little cool plastic boy. I'm just going to put this thing right inside there. Making sure we're getting rid of any bouldering. After that, I'm going to use this tamp here and I'm going to give it a small little tamp. You want to make sure it's flat. You want to make sure that there's not obvious ridges inside of your espresso bed. Because what that will do is it will channel water, will drive through those little cracks, and you'll get an unevenly extracted espresso shot, which clearly is not what we want. So, with that in mind, I am going to 
place the porta filter on top of this machine as well as the little freaking thingy thing. I don't know what it's called. It's science terms, okay? Andrew's gonna kill me, but I don't know what that little piece is called. But cha! Ah! It's so hot, it wants to kill me. Ah! I place it on top. It's temperature incredibly hot. Close to 100 degrees Celsius. Actually, it's more like 90 degrees and slowly dropping. I'm gonna pour the, the water right into the top of the brew head here, um, giving a little bit of pre-infusion because it will come in contact with the grounds. All right, let's do this. Placing the scale down here, I'm gonna be shooting for about 46 grams of espresso, hoping to get a good line of crema, trying to be around the six to eight bar range, although we will see. So first, water in. Fortunately, this doesn't take too much water, which is nice because it also heats up very quick. So if you wanna do a lot of espresso, um, then you can do that. Ah, perfect. All right, placing. All right, now the moment of truth where I will be brewing. Ta ta ta. Keep an eye on my gauge here. I'm gonna start to apply a little bit of pressure. Look and see where we at for a pre infusion. And first little bubbles here. I'm gonna leave this for a couple of seconds here with my timer rolling. And then I'm gonna begin the press slowly, extracting sweet, sweet, delicious beverage right out of this espresso machine. As you can see, we are committing espresso. I'm seeing a thin line of crema form on the top. I'm a horrible narrator, but here I am, applying pressure to the espresso machine, creating a beverage that will get me caffeinated through my day, through my enemies. I don't have that many. Actually, I have some enemies. Almost dude tried to punch me the other day. And 46 grams of liquid. We're gonna let this drip out a little bit. We're not gonna pump the machine because thumbs down to doing that, and I can't tell you the science behind that because I don't really know the science behind that. I've done it. I've created a sweet, sweet beverage. A thick line of crema lines the top. A heart, exposed, ready, vulnerable to be tasted. Now, as per recommendations from a man named James Hoffman, stirring the espresso to help mix in the crema with everything. Different parts of the espresso have different flavors, and I want to make sure that everything's mixed well to get a full picture of what we've created. Top notch, delicious, 10 out of 10. Here's the thing with espresso. Espresso is not my forte, so to be honest, my opinion on the flavor might not be super credible. However, I think it's delicious, and I'm not usually a big espresso guy, so to me, that almost says more. Starting out especially, I could not drink espresso straight. As much as I wanted to, and as much as I wanted to understand and get it and get all that acidity from it, it was something that I was like, you know what, I just don't think I'm that kind of guy. However, being able to kind of dial in with a machine at home, use my own coffees, try different roasts, try different grind sizes, like I said, I do know that they have a cheaper version of this, so you guys can create at home. I think it's around $150. The awesome thing too is that I am not done with this boy. I've seen people on YouTube creating some really awesome stuff, whether that be with desserts, iced espresso. You can do a cold press shot, which I really want to get into a little bit because half of the hassle with this thing is heating up the water, heating up the brew chamber, but you can do it with cold water. And if I could do that, what I did one time, I brewed a, a, a cold press shot and then I tung -tung poured it right over some vanilla ice cream and then I died because it was good. Um, so, I'll leave a link to the description. I want to say a big thank you to Kinu for sending me this amazing grinder as well as Flair for giving me the opportunity to share with you guys a new avenue on YouTube. Home espresso. Home delicious beverage. I should probably not drink all this as you guys can tell. I can tell I'm even talking quick and I don't think I talk that fast. If you guys would like to follow more adventures on Instagram, you may do so. I leave a link in the description. I put it there. I place it. You may click it and push the follow button or you may reject my offer, to which I say, yeah, yeah, ah, bye bye, boys. Bah, post video people, you're here, I see you. For those of you that are here, my dedicated boys, the people at the end, the ones who truly, you've waited, and I see you, I see you leave comments about the things that I say at the end, and I go, that boy knows, he's a boy that knows, and by boy, I mean B-O-I. Regardless of gender, you can be a sterling boy. I don't know if that's a thing. Do I want to start that? No. No. I need a... No.